this episode of Ice Grip Garage, we're going to try to get this 1952 Dodge Meadowbrook running for the first time in probably 117 billion years. I'm not very fond of the term barn find. I think it's overly uh, misused, but this actually was what you call a barn find. Uh, pulled it out of a shed. I think it was in Iowa. I can't even remember. But it's been sitting a very long time. It's a balmy 30 degrees today. So I got all the snow off of it. And uh, we're going to pop the hood and see what we're working with. Might not even be possible. This is going to be really interesting. Because I'll admit I don't know a lot about these old Dodges. This is a... Uh, straight six, little straight six, and it has what's called a fluid drive, which is actually really cool. It's a manual transmission, but it also has a torque converter. So say you're in first gear, you can roll up to a stoplight and hold the brake and it'll sit there and idle. Uh, which is super ideal for some people, I guess. Well, my first impression is a bunch of junk, which is right up my alley. Uh, it seems to be pretty complete, actually. I mean, the belt's on it. Got some old sparkulator wires in here. Uh, that one's unhooked for some reason. Someone was messing with the cap. She's got a battery. Looks like a positive ground. So she'd be a six volter, which is gonna turn over really slow in this cold. So that'll be a lot of fun. I see 58 hose clamps on the fuel line. That's perfect. Carburetors in it. That's not stuck. So, I don't know. Let's start with the spark plugs. I'll put a battery charger on her, just because we're that optimistic. I don't even know what the hell that is. And we'll go from there. If we get a little fire out of it, it'd be worth it to actually change the fluids. Oh, she's got oil and maybe about five gallons of water. So, probably looking at a head gasket, but all I need to do is get this thing fired today, and I'll be super happy. Here's a closer look at what the situation is we got going on in here. Um, these plugs look really nasty. There's a lot of sediment and stuff around the plugs, so I'm actually going to fire up the old uh, air compressor and try to blow some of that out. So when we pull the plugs out, that stuff doesn't fall into the uh, cylinders. Well, the old Harbor Freight air compressor was locked up. So I did the right thing and just used my other Harbor Freight air compressor. Way to go. Holy cow. Cover the carburetor up here. Lot of junk. I didn't realize how deep the heads were around these plugs. You know, I never understood this whole 10 millimeter socket thing. The one I always lose is these 13 16s. Guy could just never have enough of them around. Oh, that came right out. I was expecting that to be seized actually. Black and sooty. That's actually a good sign so far. Pop the rest of these out quick. able to tell a lot actually by the way the plugs are fouled or destroyed or whatever else we can kind of see what the engine was doing I have a suspicion that we might have a head gasket out so we should be able to tell that this is another bad idea well we got the plugs out I'm not an expert at reading spark plugs but uh, this is a for me a good sign they're all black and sooty it's running rich obviously but I don't see any heavy oil deposits I don't see any signs of damage, and most importantly, 
Uh, it appears that all have been firing, which is actually really good news. Well, the parts store couldn't find plugs to match, so I'm gonna fix them up real good with some sandpaper and some brake cleaner. Good enough. Rebuilt. Brand new. After you give them the old one-two with the sandpaper, you just kind of hit them like that. Cleans them up. Since the plugs are out, I'm going to take some WD-40 and shoot a little down each hole. And that'll help uh, do something, I guess. A little bit down the carburetor. The right thing to do would be put a breaker bar on the crank bolt and slowly try to ease her over a little bit, but the old battery charger says the battery's got some life, so I'm just going to go ahead and test the starter at the same time and crank on it and see what happens. It's always hard finding keys when you buy junk. And I don't think this one came with one. Key to something that says Germany. Master lock key. Nope. Uh, key to the shop truck. Nope. Boat key. Nope. We might have to do the old zitzing screwdriver thing on this. All right, last ditch effort. Keys to a uh, New Yorker. Oh, that's going through the dash. Uh oh, I don't think that was good. Turns. All right, here we go. Absolutely nothing. Wow. Not even a clunk. Great. Great! It's probably all the digitals and I really don't want to mess with that today. I got a switch. Yeah, it doesn't even do anything. Oh! I don't know if that's turning over. Yep. Fan blade's moving. Okay, so I have a worthless key that just spins and a toggle switch. That was way too much. That's all right. Let's give it a whirl. All right, here we go. Turning the key, even though it just spins around in circles. Switch. Ooh. Friggin' dome light works. But I don't think we got enough I think it just fired, literally. Pump it? I don't know. I'm gonna put the old depth recharger on boost. This freaking key. Try it again. And it's spinning fast enough. You know, these Walmart battery chargers are just a good product. They work excellent. Well, while the battery's charging, I think I'm going to try to figure out this key situation. All right, battery's been charging for quite a while. Let's see what happens now. No way. 
rig and running. I don't know if it's got oil pressure. Smoking like hell. I can't believe this. This is probably the easiest one I've ever had. And I thought it was going to be the most unlikely. It's just sitting here idling after running for two minutes. I'm still just blown away. This thing's sitting here idling like a sewing machine. Unbelievable. Who knows how long this thing was sitting. See what happens when the thermostat opens, if it even opens. If it uh, circulates or not. I can see a pretty bad fuel leak coming out of the pump area. Oh, here's where this is. Uh, we don't know if the transmission works. We definitely don't know if it has brakes. Haven't figured out the head gasket situation or even really looked. It does have a massive fuel leak. So unfortunately the right thing to do would be uh, just let it sit, figure it out some other day. But it, that's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna go drive this thing. <laughs> Fires right up. All right. Does anybody know what the gear pattern is in this thing? That seems forward. Uh, coastage. Oh man, this is some sketchy stuff. Yeah, no brakes at all. I can't see out my plastic bag or window. I kind of figured out why my neighbors hate me. Might have something to do with driving an unlicensed, registered, or insured vehicle with the exhaust cut off that you haven't safety checked ever through the neighborhood. I made it about three quarters of the way around the block, and the heat gauge is already pegged. So that's good. overheating but I can't stop I guess we're gonna lock it up oh yeah no brakes forgot it's a nice thing about manuals just ride the old gear home stretch I'm on my street Sound like a synchro tranny. Come on. Oh, yeah. Made it. So, uh, Something happened, I think. Oh yeah. Some would call this a failure. I call this a win. We nailed it. So anyway, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. We're going to do some really cool stuff for this car in the future. It's probably going to blow your mind. <laughs>